morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning, get up, get out of bed. It's time to wake up, you sleepy head. Time to wake up, it's a brand new day. And we can't miss out on that day to decay. Get your day planned out to be at your best. And you gotta make sure you got the right back test. Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake. Cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes. And race your condos will pay the bills. But you gotta be quick to get those fills. Follow your plan to keep your pockets thick. If that market gaps up, look for Uncle Rick. Small gap down means it's time for a duck. But if it doesn't set up, then we don't give up. Good morning, everybody. You know why we came here today. Now let's get to it. Yeah. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday, January 23rd. Welcome to today's Zero DTE live stream. We got a special two for one today. Dr. Chad is going to be co-hosting. Uh, Chad, you are the co-host, so you can unmute. Yo, yo, what's up? There we go. Good morning, good morning. Uh, all right, so we got S&Ps pretty flat, down two and a half. NASDAQ plus 20. Did I say down two and a half? I meant up two and a half. Uh, Russell up 18. Russell's up almost a full percent. Dow slightly red. Gold and silver slightly green. Notes and bonds a little bit red. 10-year yield up 1%. Oil down 0.75%. Natty gas down 2.5%. Grains slightly higher. Euro and the pound a little bit red. And Bitcoin off another 3%. Bitcoin been on a little slide ever since the ETFs came out. Peaked at almost 50,000, back down to 38. <laughs> VIX, 13.18. So my plan today is to, um, I'm going to, the uh, I mentioned on the Power Hour live stream, I'm going to be deciding which which strategies I want to kind of put on the back burner uh, in favor of my the NTT kind of re-entry tranching in. Uh, one of those is going to be the Tuesday AM Iron Condor. So it's the <clears throat> early exit one. So I'm not going to do that this morning in favor of uh, I'll be doing some, some tranching in. I've also got my one, two, one, three, one, four, uh, four, five, and four, seven double calendars I need to take off this morning. So Chad and I, uh, Chad won, uh, Chad's on here because I know there's obviously been a lot of interest and questions and stuff about his, the way that he's trading zero DTE. So figured we'd team up, and give you guys a chance to Obviously, ask questions if you have questions about my stuff, but Chad's on here, so you can ask about his as well. And for those of you that trade Mighty 90 and Runners, uh, Netflix has earnings today. Keep that in mind. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Chad? Netflix has earnings after the bell. Oh, gotcha. Sorry, my volume was down. So anybody that trades Mighty 90 and Runners... All right, so we got about 40 seconds till the bell. So for my NTT, I mean, looks like price is about to push back up into the candles here, looking at ES pre-market. Uh, Dayow um, had asked about me watching ES versus SPX, and, and really that just matters at the open. Because if I look at SPX, there's just not any pre-market action, right? Because it doesn't trade pre-market. So I look at ES to determine if I want to get in at the open. And, you know, if price comes up and starts pushing into the candle, I'll, I'll go ahead and take one at the open here. 
which I'm going to go ahead and buy some longs. So yeah, we're not trending. So I'm going to go ahead and get into one of my NT tiers. So we are so 10, 20, 25 wide. So I'm using my order templates here. Oh my gosh, I bought my lungs in the wrong account. All right, let's try this again. Buy some lungs in the other account. We'll do 30 wide here since price has moved a little bit. Once I get filled, I'll come back and show you a little bit more detail about what I'm doing. All right, I got, I got filled on that. <clears throat> All right, so real quick here. My trade steward filled a couple things. Number one, got in a 1DTE iron condor. So that got filled on the 40s and 75s, which I think is the same strikes as we did yesterday. Uh, got filled at $14 even. So that's my 1DTE. Uh, I've been testing out this O2 double calendar on, uh, or actually it's just a call calendar on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So that got filled. I'll talk, I'll talk more about that. And then my overnight iron condor from yesterday is still on. It's up about 9%. That one will close out here this morning. Uh, in regards to, so going back to my, uh, my NTT. So price was touching the candle. So I went ahead and entered at the open. Um, and then, and that was at a, uh, that's a three, two ratio. And the way I'm doing that, at least right now, is um, let me get to it. So it'd be this one here. So what I'm doing is I'm I'm taking a third off at twenty percent profit, and then I'm just and I'm ratcheting my stop down from eighty percent down to forty, and then I'm just trailing it, trailing the remainder as discussed in the uh, little mini course that I did. Uh, e. Allison, can you create a channel or pin trades, spreadsheets, et cetera? You might need to expand on that. I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, Chad, if you want to chime in and if you have anything to say, I got to, I got to, uh, close out my calendar trade. So I'm going to be busy for just a couple minutes here. Yeah. Yep. And I'll, uh, I'll call out any mighty 90 runners that I see if you guys, 
for those that do both. But stocks pushing down right now. Things are getting weaker. Second five minute bar. I did see somewhere on that uh, the business channel I have on here with my trade setup that Netflix expects to have really good earnings. I mean, they've got a, had a ton of new members sign up. That's what it was reported anyway. We'll see. I just posted my one, two exit. That was good for about 8%. Oh, NASDAQ down 21. S&P barely positive, Dow down in the red. Oh, you mean for like uh, any mighty 90 runners that I take this morning? Is that what you're talking about, Chris? I mean, I can. I just, um, or I'll just call him out. I'm kind of, kind of up to Steve if he wants to. I mean, I'll call it out for sure, and then you can look at it on your screen if you want to. I mean, that's just as easy. But um, Tesla's getting a big volume bar. Looks like to the upside right now. Well, I mean, it could be zero DTE or people that, I mean, I, I do both. So there are people that do both. So you can trade your zero DTE. I, I'm not going to put on a zero DTE the way I do it here for a while. I mean, I think, I think most people know that. But for those that actually, you know what? Tesla in Orion does not have a big volume bar, but it does in think or swim. Well, that's interesting. I just posted my one four exit. Tesla up over two and three quarter percent. Baba up eight percent. Baidu up over seven. Not sure what's going on with those. They've been beat up a lot lately. Roblox almost got a big volume bar. Yeah, 
Yeah, Biden All was right. close as well. So it looks like I'm going to scratch out a little profit on my four or five. Not as good as I knew a lot of you guys did who entered at the correct time. A lot of calendars to close this morning. Just posted. So I've posted my one, two, one, four, one, three, and four, five. Now I've got um, one left, which is my four, seven. Nice winner there. Netflix becoming a sports company now? Is that what you say, Chris? Hmm. Interesting. Probably competing with Amazon Prime. Okay, all done with calendars. <clears throat> Yeah, Dale, I mentioned on Friday that I had to enter that one early because I wouldn't be by my computer at the last hour. So I did that so that you guys wouldn't follow my follow my alert. Uh let's see, Sharky, did you get your question answered? What yeah, this is the right channel to post during the live streams. Oh, man. All right. So still just got on my uh, my initial trade here. Not seeing much decay yet. Price is just kind of up and down, up and down. Volatility dropping a little bit. DKNG getting a big volume bar. So potential volume runner for those of you that want a smaller stock to trade. I may have bought some Tesla calls at the end of the day yesterday. They're doing quite well right now. Uh, Gonzalo, one question. What is the reason for deploying calendars today instead of Iron Condor? Uh, I was I was just closing some of my calendars. Uh, a couple of them that I put on on Friday and a couple few that I put on yesterday. Uh, La Sosa, yeah, uh, three twos, regard, irrespective of direction. Yeah, I'm not trying to play direction with these. I'm just, I'm using three twos because puts have, you know, with put skew, they have more premium than calls. So um, just getting a little bit more, more premium that way. And if you do any, any testing on option omega you'll you'll typically in, in almost all cases you know in any type of re-entry type strategy using a three two with using all different variables 
but using a three, two versus a, a one to one is typically going to do better. All right, so my overnight iron condor. Let's see. Can't remember exactly what time my overnight iron condor comes off. That would be ten fifteen, so nine fifteen. So about another thirty minutes, my overnight iron condor will come off. So it's currently up about eight <clears> percent. <throat> I always say the puts first. Yeah, so if I say three, two, that's always puts to calls. If I, if I, um, yeah. I would, I always, um, I always indicate differently if I'm, doing more calls to puts because that's more abnormal for me anyway to do more calls than puts. You know, if you look at, I'll pull up the option chain here. If you look at SPX options, you know, and you go, let's say, so we're trading right at 54, 50, call it 55. So if I go 10, 20 points away on the call side, those are buck 80. 10, 20 points away on the put side, those are 280. You know, so that's that's that put skew. So you're just you're getting more premium on the puts because of that put skew. So going a little heavier on the puts gives you a little bit more premium. And I mean, you know, from a long term perspective, also, I mean the, the markets, you know, typically go up, right? These companies are trying to grow and make money. So the market's typically drifting, slight drift to the upside over time. So having a little bit of a bullish bias. And frankly, it just, you know, from all the testing I've done, just tests a little bit better. Some other positions, I've got an MES short strangle. Rolled puts up a couple times on that one. The other one, still hanging out just right of center. QQQ, rolled puts up on this once. Still pretty centered. Only we've got one duck left. Been popping off ducks, popping, popping off duck beaks lately. With these uh with these rallies. Uh and then VXX took off, I had 20 contracts. I took off seven yesterday for about 35% of max profit. We're currently we're currently at about 50% of max profit now, which is my original target. I'm gonna go ahead and take off. I'll take off another six. Leave a little runner on there. Yeah, Chris, I'm going to be, uh, I mean, kind of depends 
how long we're on here, but uh, if not before on, you know, usually nine to nine fifteen, nine twenty, right in there is when I'll probably take my first iron condor. So. I just posted my VXX vertical exit, closed another six contracts. So I've got seven left. So I'm just going to let those run. See if, if volatility continues to contract. Try to squeeze some more out of that. Hovering just under all-time highs that we hit yesterday of 48.68, currently at 48.54. I mean, we have got no movement today. We're basically still inside the range of the first five-minute bar. Little little pop out at the beginning of the second one, but tight range so far. Uh, El Piero, the VXX strategy. It's, um, let me pull my Discord over here so you can see what I'm pointing at. Um, it is the, well, where'd it go? Did I put it in the premium selling? Well, we used to have a VIX course. Where'd it go? Hmm. Well, give me a minute. Not seeing any mighty 90s yet. I do kind of setting up like an upside continuation runner there. Yeah, when I searched for it, I found it, Anil, but why is it? I can't, but it's not showing up in my channels on the left for some reason. Is it for you? Huh. It's very odd. I'm going to go ahead and look at getting a zero DTE iron condor on here. It just because price movement has been so stagnant here. So typically, you know, you get a push or two out of the gates, but not today. So I'm going to look at the 4870. Uh, 4840. 4870, 4840 calls puts. Sorry, Chad, would you, I kind of cut you off. What, what strikes were you saying? 48, I'm looking at 48, 70, 48, 40. 48, 70, 48, 40. So that would be here and here. Let's see what my premium is first here. So 49.20 calls for the wings. Forty-seven ninety for the puts. Not 
not the best credit for the morning, but it's decently wide. Uh, Moral, yeah, I've got uh, I've got my PowerPoint pretty much done. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It's pretty much done. done. I, and I, I'll, we'll we'll uh, kind of go over it and yeah, give you some feedback and that stuff. And uh, yeah, so I'll I'll get it sent here to Steve, and then just need to record. You know, rec do a recording over it. I should be able to get that sent to Steve here today. So my uh, initial entry looks like it's up about 600. So it's about 12% higher. I was filled at 610 on my uh, first AM Iron Condor. So my 20% profit targets at 1395 and my spreads currently trading at 1555. Oh yeah, so Mara was asking, Chad, do you want to do that as kind of a a live class or you want to just record it? Well, I mean, I, I was kind of thinking um I mean, it could, it could really be either if it's something that people are going to want like, you know, down the road new members. I mean, I don't know if you want to have that in, as a course. It's just in there with the others. Or you want to just put the live course, you know, do it live and then put it in there. Well, I think um, I think what would probably, I think what members would probably like is is doing it live and kind of like we did with uh, the, uh, the different trade plans, you know, where people presented okay. how they're trading. Um, and then... So you could, you could present like, you know, go through all the slides, go through all the right. details, examples, and then just save all the questions for the end. Gotcha. That way. And then uh, that goes into the course, that goes into the course channel or the trade plans, I guess. Yeah. One of the, yeah. One of the two. Okay. Yeah. Michael Todd votes for recorded course. <laughs> It'll be recorded either way, Michael Todd. So you can go back and watch and rewatch till your heart's content. Listen to the sound of Chad's silky smooth voice. I'm just glad I'm, I've kind of gotten my voice back. <laughs> Steve knows I've struggled over the years. Seems like once a year I lose my voice. I think it stems back to I was in seventh grade. And I broke my nose playing football and it really affected my sinuses. I mean, it was shattered. This is not fun. Somebody's fist get through your face mask or what? No, it was actually a flag football in PE in seventh grade. Mm. Somebody's head right into my nose. Well, my friends, 30 minutes in and the market hasn't moved, which is beautiful for zero DTE. So my uh, profit target on my fill of 610, so 20% of my OCO will be at 490 with trailing stop of 460. Maro, did you did your yours like closed out outside of regular trading hours this week? Is that right? Did I see you post that? Yeah. 
All right, so what did I just do here? Oh, that was my O2 call calendar, small winner. So that the O2 call calendar, I put it on the list, but um, here's that, here's what I've been, and I, I've just been testing it with small size. But it's essentially just putting on an at the money call calendar with zero days in the front, two in the back, uh, and just holding it for um, 30 minutes, basically. Getting in at the open, closing at 10 a.m. It's been, you know, just kind of pretty, pretty flat to hire over the last while. But 2022 was really rocked up, which obviously did for a lot of those, but it's still been pretty consistent. So I've just been, I've been testing it, deciding if, and I've got it in a bot, so I don't really have to think about it much, but and that's just on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Opt for dollar. What laptop should I buy? Uh, well, I, I just recently bought a new PC desktop, and I went with the Alienware. It's a. It's owned by Dell. I really like it. It's fast. It's made for gamers. So no more MacBook, huh? I've still got a MacBook. So I've in my office, I've got four monitors hooked up to my PC. And then I've also got my desktop Mac here. So it's two different computers, okay. but, but I'll use that for certain things. And then, and then, yeah, I still have a, I still have a MacBook that I, like when I was traveling. No, I was actually, week. I was actually uh, over the weekend kind of looking at laptops. I was kind of wanting, I, mean, I have a, a Dell that has the core 17 eighth generation um processor or whatever they call that but i'm actually kind of looking at a a new laptop and don't really know what would be the fastest i guess powerful i would check out um check out dick k's trade plan okay he goes over kind of some technology stuff in detail dick are you on here No, it doesn't look like it. But I got all my I got all my specs from Dick K whenever I bought mine. Okay. If you are uh, a trader of the mighty nineties, Netflix had a really good winner just to, just now. Well, if you look at Netflix, nice looking mighty ninety that would have been a winner. I've heard I've heard Acer. I've heard of that. Never used one, but really the processor. Right. Is the biggest thing. That's yeah. what I need is to I know mean, is like I'm, what what type of processor. How I'm big? speaking as if I know what I'm talking about. So don't don't take my word for it. But there's a lot a lot more tech tech people in here than yeah. Like Jonathan builds his own. Like there's no chance I can build my own computer. <laughs> Ryzen i9. Okay. So yeah, i9. That's what I have. Okay. So that's the processor. You want you want an i9 processor? Is that right? Yep. Okay. How much RAM? Like how much RAM do you need? I mean, the only RAM I know are like those things that run around in the mountains. Yeah, the Dodge RAM. I drive a Dodge RAM. Well, that too. 
So either so thirty two minimum. Okay, I got that. Yeah, I think I have sixty four. Yep, I nine and sixty four. I think those were the two main things I wanted. Okay, that's what I needed to know. All right, currently trading at fifteen eighty. Profit targets at thirteen ninety five. A little bounce that would help. Man, it's been a while since I've seen the market chop like this out of the gates. Yeah, so check out Elliot's post. That's pretty much exactly what I got. Um, okay. Oh, cool. I'll save that picture then. It's a couple little different things, but that's a desk. That's mine's a desktop, but they have a laptop version as well. Alienware by Dell. Yeah, La Sosa, my initial stop is 80%. So you can see here, it's 80%. And then as soon as I hit my 20% profit target, that ratchets down to 40%. And I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to continue with this structure, but I do like it because really, the, really what it comes down to is once you hit 20% and ratchet your stop down from then on, it's pretty much a break even trade or better. And so if, <clears throat> if you get some, you know, one of those days with long consolidation, you're going to, you're going to be able to squeeze a lot of profit out. Now you're going to have a, a lot of trades that are tiny winners too, where if, you know, you hit your 20% and then you get stopped out on the rest. Um, but I like the, as I talk about in that, NTT little mini course. I I like the idea of um you know getting to break even as quickly as possible, but still squeezing as much out. And 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 really that methodology or thought process comes from using the back tester, even though the back testing is not going to, you know, I'm not trying to use the back tester because that's, you know, I'm entering when the back test does or anything like that. It's more about Oh, and I just hit my 20% profit target. Nice. It's more about um just I, I was just using a re-entry and, and just using looking at different structures for a trade that continued to re-enter throughout the day. And that was kind of the 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 methodology that I settled on, at least for now. Yeah, that doesn't test near as well, Krish. In the way that I was doing it. But guess what? You have option Omega. And you should see what that looks like. Just, you know, and I know from testing and trading zero DT E now for a while that the longer you can hold off. Taking profits, typically over time, the more profitable it's going to be. But then you got to withstand the mind games of, you know, a lower win rate, you know, different things like that. So it's a balance between maximizing your profits and getting enough of those wins to satisfy your psych the psychological part too. Oh, so I got to I got to ratchet my stop down. Yeah, I mean talk about a beautiful price action out of the gates for zero DT iron condors. Wow. Yeah, I mean this didn't get any better I mean, than this. No. I am glad I got my 20% cuz I assume at one point it's going to move here. <laughs> 
can't imagine we're going to have a 10 point range all day. Forty percent of the current price. So in toss, if you if you if you start with a percent trailing stop and then you ratchet it down, it'll be you know forty percent of where the wherever the price is when you ratchet it down. So I got filled at thirteen ninety five, so it's pretty close to that still. So forty percent above, forty percent of thirteen ninety five. So it's currently at 1915. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the entry. It has to do with when you ratchet it down, it's based on where the current price is. Same as, I mean, that's how Option Omega does it in the back test as well. Is it going to break out now? I'm seeing some stocks pushing the highs of J. S and P's trying. Yeah. So what part of what in evaluating kind of what structure I wanted to use, you know, one of the one of the things that I always do with my back tests is I go through the trade logs in detail. Go through the trade logs in detail, look at you know the times when you get stopped out without hitting a profit target, look at all the times you get stopped out once you hit a profit target, you know, look at what kind of profits you got on the remaining trailing stop I and mean, just go through that in detail every single time you got to do it. It just, it'll, it'll give you a much better understanding of the potential of a strategy than just looking at the uh, P and L graph and the, and the stats on the front page. Yep. SPX trying to get up to highs of day. Yeah, there's Amazon's through highs of day, Roku, Meta, some tech stocks, but plug up eighteen percent. All the way up to three dollars and thirty six cents. Neo. You used to trade Neo? Baidu and Baba rocking. China is flying high today, I guess. I took some Baidu calls at the pivot. I wonder what's going on in China. And I took it as an upside continuation runner. Yeah, Chris, I'm using the uh, toss template. So I buy the longs and then the OCOs are just on the shorts. Oh, SPX falling back down. Lucid, I saw a Lucid car this morning. Those things look nice, but used to trade that one too. Stock's not doing so hot. It's at three bucks. At one point, it was over sixty. <laughs> Back in the EV heyday. Roku up two percent. Tesla up two percent. Was it more? Tesla has earnings 124 after market. So tomorrow after market. Yep, Netflix today. Meta, February 1st. Jumia, the Amazon of Africa. Apparently, Africa was not ready for an Amazon. That stock was once almost $70 a share. Now it's at three. Jeez. I know that one pretty well since I, I owned that one for a while. I bought one Netflix contract at lows of day today, just a little bit ago. I'm just going to hold overnight. You're going to hold a call through earnings? 
Yep, because I'm okay with the I'm okay with the max loss. So got a little inside information that's supposed to be really good earnings. If it doesn't, I don't usually do that, but it's just one one contract, one little itty bitty contract. All right, so just closed out my overnight iron condor. And waiting for it to update. Book 13.8%, so 625. Nice. My one DT. Uh, yeah, Chris. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Chris, just I just bought one long contract. Don't advise doing that very often, but you just got to be okay with the max loss. What delta are you at? You're just, you're just work. You're getting, obviously, I mean, you know this, but that vol crash is going to kill theta. So you, you're going to need to move at least one standard deviation or more. Oh uh, yeah. So. Uh, I like the like the sixty five delta. Gotcha. Yeah, the old EV hype just kind of fizzled out. People decided they aren't ready for full electric yet. A hybrid. I said Toyota stocks at all time highs because they bet on hybrids over full EV, and that's uh, definitely what's Toyota's ticker. There it is. Oh. No, that's not it. TM. Yeah. Getting close to all time highs. Looks like all time highs 213. It's at 201. Still sitting dead center on my iron condor. Getting close to booking 20%. Yeah, Ken, I've, I've talked to some people about that. Um, driving long distance with an EV. It's like, why would you want to drive three hours and then sit and let it charge for extended period of time? I tell you what, I like, I really like my, my plug-in hybrid. You have a plug-in hybrid? Cause I had a hybrid. It was just gas. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's an Audi a seven. And so you plug it in, I plug it in at night and then it gives me about, it says 30 to 35 miles of range, but it uh, depends on how you drive. I usually get about 20 miles out of it. So just going to and from my office, I don't use any gas. What is it again? It's an Audi A7. Okay. Huh. So you put gas in it, right? You put gas in it, but, uh, and so once the battery range runs out, it just kicks over to, to, a, to a normal hybrid where it's using part battery, okay. part gas. Okay. That's what okay. That's what I had was just a I had a Sonata hybrid until the transmission went out. I sent in my application for uh, personalized plates that said zero DTE. I haven't got them yet. No, uh, you did. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you said they'd be here in six to eight weeks. I still haven't heard back. What a legend. <laughs> uh, maybe it'd be like NT or Nav Trade or something. <laughs> no. Zero DTE, baby. I used to have personalized plates back in the day. I've never had them. I've always thought people with personalized plates were kind of douchey, but now it's <laughs> me. It's going to be me. 
And yeah, I'm okay with it. Long, had them a long time ago. I'm about ready to hit 20%. Hey, Kelvin. Uh, now, I um, I look at ES, and as long as it's not... Let me pull up my chart here if you're looking at my screen. <laughs> True, Ken. So at the open, you know, unless it's, unless the, um, you know, price is way below the candles and it's, you know, kind of trending, I'll wait, but it opened this morning and, and pushed right up into the candles. And so in that case, I'll just enter at the open, but I'm looking at ES so I can see the overnight, the pre-market action. Well, my friends, I'm going to jump off here, get some other stuff done. This is uh, about as good as it gets for zero DT. That's right. Let's let it play out, make another move, and then try to get some more tranches on. Just the only issue here is I didn't get enough on. Uh, yeah, Fish, check out the uh, in the course channel I. It's just like a 20, 25 minute video or something like that. Just kind of a little overview of what I've been doing. I, I mean, if we're just sitting here consolidating, I'm not going to enter another one, but um, so I, I would want to see some price movement and then price moving back into the candles again before I enter again. Yeah, same with me. I'm not going to enter another one. Until price breaks one way or the other. Yep. All right, Chadwick, anything else before we shut her down? No, I will uh, shoot you that PowerPoint. You can look it over and then we can figure that out. Cool. Uh, on top of the mountain, check out the Zero DTE course channel. Oh, the, the study? Yeah, it's in the NTT channel. It's in the... Uh, actually... Yeah, the NTT course channel. There's a the first, the bottom post there is the uh, the indicators. It's just a toss shared link or a trading view, depending on which chart you want. I'll be doing a DKS today. Yeah, actually, it's going to come on here shortly. So let's see where I get on that. VIX overnight move is slightly higher. My DKS will come in at probably the 50 put 65 calls, I'd say. 45 puts, 65 calls. That'll come in, start coming in here in about 30 seconds. Oh, get a little movement down. Yeah, I just hit 20%. Down to lows of day. Let's see if we can crack it. I wonder if we're going to bounce here. By the way, on top of the mountain for the for the NTT study, all I'm using is the uh, the trend candles. So it's the NTT trend candles with the default settings. I don't I don't for the zero DT stuff. That's all I'm using. I'm not I, I left everything else, all the other NTT stuff off the charts. Keep I like to keep my charts clean. All right, filled on DKS at. 765. And that was on 4865 calls, 48, 45 puts. 
All right, all. Have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll see you in Power Hour. Cheers. Later.